Rogers with us from the Pirates pre and post game shows over on the fan on the Pirates radio network. I still liked what I saw in the first two innings offensively. Uh, and I just love this scrappy, intentional or otherwise, base running and offense that we're seeing. Matter of fact, at one point last night, I, I tweeted, holy shades of Billy Ball, uh, to which uh, I got no replies, meaning nobody knew what I was talking about. But I'm presuming you do. Well, yeah, absolutely. The way that they were able to uh, run the base paths and uh, hit three run home runs in the Murraysville Little League, right? That's what you're referring to. <laughs> Billy Martin, maybe? Billy Ball, yeah. Billy, I, oh, I mean, okay, I love it. Billy, yeah, Billy Martin, you got it. I, I, no, but absolutely. They, they're really one of the better offensive clubs in the National League. If you look at the way that they're able to get on base uh, with such consistency, they're scoring runs at a pretty decent clip. Uh, and, you know, they have, I think, a, enough a power to gap one every once in a while that they're definitely a force to be reckoned with. And I think there's a lot of folks that want to go ahead and say that this team needs to go look for a bat at the trade deadline. And who knows, they might make a, a move that will help bolster their lineup. But I think that that's probably a little further down on their priority list. If it's the only deal that they can make and that pops up, will they go ahead and do that? Maybe. But I think right now they're in a really good spot offensively. I like him here, but uh, at it. what cost? And do you think Neil Huntington's willing to pay the price? And that's the uh, $60 million question. Uh, this report from Yahoo Sports, Jeff Patson, who is definitely a, one of the most well-respected baseball gurus, uh, writers in the game nationally. Um, he says that Josh Bell could be the actual price, which surprises me, quite frankly, because... Uh, the Pirates will only have about a month and a half of John Lester. And while he is definitely a difference maker, you can maybe make an argument and match him up against David Price and say that he's having a better year than Price. And I think that that wouldn't be an obscene thing to say. However, when you make these deals, you look for the contractual control, meaning years after this year. You want it for 2015 and 16. Do the Pirates feel that they have an opportunity to sign him? I don't think so. He's going to command a premium dollar on the free agent market. And there's some rumors that he really wants to stay in Boston, though the Red Sox are nickel and diming him, and they might just reconvene their negotiations in December and to wind up a Red Sox again after all. So that would be a huge win for the Red Sox. But if you're looking for a stabilizer, an ace, somebody that can stop a losing streak, or you could throw twice in a seven-game playoff series, Lester is certainly that type of guy. The Pirates right now, even though they have a pretty decent, stable pitching staff over the last couple of months, as they have had in the last couple of years with Liriano and Burnett or Liriano and Locke or some combination thereof, they were able to go ahead and absolutely uh, show a great one-two punch that could shut you down in the series. They don't have that this year. Though one through five, they're fairly solid. Lester would definitely solve that. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, I guess 48 hours from now, things will be known. Of course, it's you know it's just the uh, the the deadline. It doesn't mean deals won't happen after it. But uh, we're still going to watch it. And by the way, Pirates against the Giants again tonight. You can hear Dan Zangurley along with his partner Kevin Ori on the pre- and the post-game shows on the Pirates Radio Network. Dan, as always, thanks for your time, man. Always enjoy it, Bill. Joining us on the 84 Lumber Newsline is 345. Traffic on the fives every 10 minutes. Powered by Bowser Nissan. Let's get back to Bonnie. And we have an accident on the Parkway East. It's southbound around Penn Hills. The right lane is blocked, and we've got a bit of bad traffic backing up as you're heading up through that area. We also see those delays in the Parkway East starting at Bates to the tunnels for that trip. Inbound starts at 2nd Avenue. Slow down from the Parkway West to the top of the hill on the inbound side. Outbound off and on some delays there. Robinson still building up around 2230. Get the biggest congestion. And then on the Parkway North, it's running in good shape. 28 is slow on the north shore into the construction zone inbound about the 31st Street Bridge. 79, not too bad of a ride that we see around here, but we do have those slowdowns uh, northbound around Evans City with some work going on there this afternoon. Inner Triple A traffic on the 5 at 355 from the Longwood Oakmont Traffic Center. A Bonnie Diver, KDK. Chance of a shower, thunderstorm, but nothing on the radar right now. Let's just call it partly sunny. And 68 for the high, we're almost there. It is 66 degrees right now at Pittsburgh International under partly sunny skies. KDK News Time, 346. <laughs> Time to get to KDK Sports from 93.7 The Fan. Here's Jeff Hathorne. Pirates are doing something they haven't done since before the Great Depression. And that's not the years between 92 and 2012. Bucks have won 16 straight games when they score in the first inning. That includes last night. And we'll start Francisco Liriano against Tim Hudson. 10-15 over on the fan. 39-year-old Hudson gave up eight earned runs in July. Six of them in one start as Hudson has a 2.65 ERA for the season. The rumors of the trade deadline latest, Yahoo Sports' Jeff Passan claiming the Bucs are a potential late entry with the Red Sox. 
And lefty John Lester, who has a 252 earned run average this year, 149 strikeouts to 32 walks. Brewers have said to inquire on David Price and Lester as well. MLB Network's Peter Gammon said general managers are putting too much value in their own prospects, which has slowed down the market. Doug Melvin in Milwaukee has made traded off packages of future prospects for CC Sabathia and Zach Greinke. And people said, you know what, he traded away the future of the franchise. Guess who's in first place? Doug Melvin and the Brewers. Most Gazette Shelly Anderson reports the Pens are making progress in talks with restricted free agent center Brandon Sutter. They settled their head injury lawsuit. They've agreed to create a testing fund and also implement concussion rules. Off day for the Steelers as they have afternoon practices the next two days, then night practice at St. Vincent College on Friday. Linebacker Jason Wurls with a nice pick yesterday. And the now veteran said of mentoring the young guys. As far as being um, a young guy in the room, you know, it's, it's, it's tough just getting a handle of the, of the playbook and knowing what it, what it be in the pace of the game. So just kind of getting those guys acclimated to it. Um, I think that me and um, how deep and kind of taking those guys on our wings. When asked about Bon Jovi potentially buying the Buffalo Bills, Hall of Famer Andre Reid told New Yorker magazine, quote, man, forget Bon Jovi, although he didn't use forget. You might as well take this city, throw it in the river, and let it go down Niagara Falls. Sports Desk is brought to you by 84 Lumber, Jeff Hathorne, News Radio 1020, KDKA Sports. I'm used to them saying that about Cleveland, but this is Buffalo. I mean, come on, man. Guess he's not a fan of that. What if Trump bought him, what would he say? Probably the same thing, except he would have built a catch basin for him at the bottom of Niagara Falls. Thank you, Jeff. 348 on the KDKA Afternoon News. We'll check your money next. If you're overwhelmed by debt and thinking about going to a credit counseling company for help, think again, because the majority of those companies actually work for the credit card companies, and they make the credit card companies a lot of money from people just like you. But there's another way out of debt, and it's not bankruptcy, a way to reduce your debts and save you thousands of dollars. Even better, you can find out how for free by calling 1-800-709-3259. At Freedom Debt Relief, we're not a credit counseling organization. We're not a debt consolidation company. We offer a unique alternative to save you the most money possible to resolve your debt in the shortest amount of time. If you're thinking about a credit counselor, ask yourself this. Are they working for you or the credit card companies? Reduce your debt and save thousands of dollars by learning the secrets to settling your debt. For free information, call 1-800-709-3259. That's 1-800-709-3259. 1-800-709-3259. Your million-dollar look cannot be perfect if you have thinning, weak, and falling hair. Thinning hair could be the result of aging follicles. It's Mike Dunsack here for Provia from Chamonix, strengthening your hair follicles to give you stronger, fuller, more vibrant hair like nothing you've ever tried before. Provia worked for thousands of men and women across the country, and now you can try the scientific breakthrough from Chamonix and see the amazing results for yourself absolutely free. That's right. To try Provia free, call 800-525-6867. That's 800-525-6867. Just pay shipping today. You too can start enjoying fuller, thicker, and stronger hair the natural way. Provia works for both men and women, and it's safe for colored hair. But wait, it gets better. Order now and ask how you can get the brand new Provia Super Concentrate absolutely free for even faster results. To try Provia free today, call 800-525-6867. That's 800-525-6867. 800-525-6867. If you're looking for a new Subaru car or SUV, there's only one choice. Bowser Subaru with new inventory arriving daily. on top of the hill. 50 now on the KDKA Afternoon News. Before we get to business, a reminder, we'd love you to pick up some school supplies for our crayons for kids' collection. It's happening tomorrow at 5 Foster Plaza here in Green Tree between 8 and 4. If you drop them off, you get breakfast from Oakmont Bakery, lunch from King's Brownie Mobile Kitchen while supplies last. And you can also donate through our call center, which we'll set up tomorrow between 8 and 4. It's brought to you in part by 84 Lumber and Giant Eagle. Get the details at kdka.com slash crayons. All right, checking your money now with Efren Tillotson. Here's Ben Montgomery. Thanks, Bill. Good afternoon. U.S. stocks are in Mexico going into the close as a weak outlook from UPS weighed on investor sentiment and pulled transportation stocks lower. The S&P Case-Shiller Housing Index of 20 metropolitan areas fell in May. 
It's the first pullback since January 2012, but home prices still did rise 1.1% for the month. Positive news, the conference board's index of consumer confidence rose to its highest level since October of 2007. With the session almost complete, the Dow is down 0.32% at 16,928, the S&P is down 7 points at 1971, the tech-heavy Nasdaq gained 4 points to 4,448. In commodities, gold prices fell a quarter percent to 1,300, to 1300 an ounce. And Brent crude oil is down 0.75% at a $101.91 a barrel. We check your money at 20 and 50 past the hour. From Heffron Tillotson, this is Ben Montgomery for News Radio 1020, KDK. <laughs> At 3.52, let's check the headlines. Here's Rose. Bill President Obama announces new sanctions against Russia. City of Pittsburgh and UPMC drop their lawsuits against each other. And Emsworth residents gather tonight to hear plans to bring up to three dozen immigrant children to the Holy Family Institute. We'll have those stories at 4 o'clock on News Radio 1020 KDKA. What's in the news? Revere, Massachusetts. Yeah, Central Business District and the, and the neighborhoods both to the east and west, they really got hit very, very I'm Steve Kate and CBS News. Revere, Massachusetts was first settled in 1630. Came to be known as North Chelsea, then eventually took the name of Paul Revere, the Revolutionary War hero. In modern times, at least, it's never had a day quite like yesterday. As long as I can remember, we've never had to go through and experience a tornado. So, you know, to see a lot of these big, huge trees that have been down and power lines and roofs ripped off homes and things like that, it's a pretty significant day here in the city. Dan Rizzo was the mayor, he says they could have used someone like Paul Revere yesterday to forcefully warn about what was coming. Clearly, I wish that we had had more notice. I mean, the bottom line is, with an EF2 and then ultimately an EF1 tornado to have no casualties other than just a couple few people with minor injuries, that to me is amazing. The 64 or 67 residents that have experienced what we'll call significant damage and of those, 13 are uninhabitable. Just over 50 thousand people live in Revere now. The place has been the scene of a smallpox outbreak and war battles and now a tornado. When you see trees, you know, three feet across in diameter just ripped up, it's pretty, you know, it's not something we're used to here in the city of Revere. What's in the news? I'm Steve Cape and CBS News. Crayons for Kids is an initiative to help the education.